All right, people, today we are going to go over the different types of stoichiometry equations that you're going to see in this course, as well as talk about the most fundamental one, which is the mole mole one. Okay, so you'll see that there are five major types of equations. The easiest equation is where we're going to start with mole mole calculations. Then we'll get into mass mass, and then kind of like a derivative of that is going to be the mass mole or the mole mass. So these three are very related to one another and should be kind of learned together. Then later on, we'll get into volume, volume, and particle, particle, and then we will mix it all up so that you can solve any type of stoichiometry problem. Okay, so first, let's deal with mole, mole. Okay, so a mole, mole equation is going to be when a problem is going to have both the given and the unknown in the same units, and those units are mole mole, hence mole mole equation. So as we have seen with all of our other types of problems, you always write out the given, the unknown, and the conversion factor, where our conversion factors are going to be the mole ratio from the balanced equation. So always make sure, step number one, you balance every single reaction. So you're going to see that happen throughout the course of chemistry. Okay, don't assume that a uh, equation is balanced. Make sure that you check for yourself. Okay, so if you want to star circle highlight what you do during a mole mole equation, you would do exactly this, which is you would start with your given and then you would use the reaction ratio. Rxn is my abbreviations for reaction. We write reaction so much, so that's what that means. Okay, every single stoichiometry problem is going to use the reaction ratio. You need to use that balanced equation in order to figure out what the mole to mole relationship is between your given and your unknown. So that is why we made such a big deal about balancing. And then you can use your uh, dimensional analysis in order to convert everything and make sure that things cancel out. Okay, so here's our first sample problem. Our first sample problem is going to be H2 plus O2 make H2O. We're making some water. And as we saw, balance the equation first. So we balance by putting coefficients out in front. You should remember how to do this. We put a 2 in front of the H2 and a 2 in front of the H2O, making four hydrogens on the left, four hydrogens on the right, two oxygens on the left, 2 times 1, making 2 oxygens on the right. Okay, and then the equation problem would look like this. How many moles of oxygen do you need in order to make 17 moles of water? All right, so 17 moles of water is what we are given with to start with. And we want to figure out how many moles of oxygen do we need? All right, this is our unknown. Known. Ooh. So, what is our mole to mole reaction ratio? What is the relationship between oxygen and water? There are two moles of water for every implied one mole of oxygen. And it doesn't matter how you write it. One mole of oxygen for every two moles of H2O. Okay, so down below we are going to write everything out nicely for you. All right, the given is the number that they give you in the equation, 17 moles of H2O. The unknown, UNK, is going to be moles of oxygen. Our conversion factor, CF, 
is going to be one mole of O2 for every, and this is a colon, it's a proportion, two moles of H2O. Because you need to position that with dimensional analysis in order for units to cancel out. If you haven't seen the video where we talk about the fun side of chemistry and canceling out units, please make sure you do that before you go any further. Okay? So now, let's solve. When we solve, where do we start? We start with the given. They give you where to start. 17 moles of H2O. And then you make your blank proportion, and you need to figure out how to write one mole of oxygen for every two moles of H2O. It can either be written as one mole of O2 for every two moles of H2O, or proportionally the other way, two moles of water for every one mole of O2. Only one of those two options will actually cancel out your units correctly. So which one is it? How can you tell? You can tell by looking at your given units. If you have moles of water, you need to have moles of water on the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to use this one. One mole of oxygen and my two moles of H2O in the denominator will cancel out my units of moles of H2O so that we end up getting the correct proportion. Okay, it is a one to two mole proportion. So what do I do? I put this in my calculator, just like we've done all of our other dimensional analysis, multiply the numerators, divide by denominators. So grab your calculators, go push pause if you need to, come back, I'll be ready, waiting for you. So you do 17 times one, divide it by two, and you get a answer of 8.5, and then the unit that didn't cancel out, moles of O2, is what you put. Your answers should have, kind of like, three parts to their value. Okay, a first, middle, last name. It should have a number, a unit, and a label. Okay, in order to get full credit on everything, make sure that you have those three pieces of information. Okay, those of you that have access to my notes, all right, here you go. Here's everything all written out for you, identifying the given, the unknown, the proportional relationship, this, again, is the mole ratio of the given to the unknown. You start with moles of H2O. You see that I place moles of H2O in the denominator. They cancel out. I solve it, and I get 8.5 moles of O2. Okay, so here's example number two. Exact same equation. We're going to balance it as well. Two H2Os plus 1O2 gives us two H2Os. But in this problem, you're going to say how many moles of oxygen it will take to react with 334 moles of hydrogen. So here I have 334 moles of hydrogen as my given. And I want to know how many moles of oxygen is my unknown. Okay, stoichiometry is great. They don't have to be both your new uh, reactants or a reactant and a product. It, it doesn't matter. Anything in the reaction is fair game. So you can use any part. Okay, our conversion factor that we're looking at is only the two parts that are identified in the given and the unknown. So we have two moles of H2 for every one implied mole of O2. So again, let's write that down below. All right, so given we have 334, oops, sorry about that, 334 moles of H2. My unknown is going to be moles of oxygen. My conversion factor is the reaction ratio two moles of H2 for every one mole of O2. And then we're going to solve it. If you got a problem, you'll I'll solve it. So where do we start? 
and we write our given, 334 moles of H2. Then your blank proportion. And then we figure out which version of this ratio we are going to put over here in this blank one. Okay, this can either be written as two moles of H2 proportional to one mole of O2, or as one mole of O2 per two moles of H2. Okay, so which is it? Box number one or box number two? How can you tell? Oh, oh, I know. I know how you can tell. You can tell by looking at the units, the units of the given. If you have moles of H2 here, you need to cancel it out by putting moles of H2 on the bottom. So I'm going to use this one. One mole of O2 for every two moles of H2. Bada bing, bada boom. Moles of H2, moles of H2, we're going to cancel out. The unit that remains is moles of O2, which is what I want from over here. Go grab your calculator. If you don't know how to solve it, you do 334 multiplied by 1. I know that's the same. And then if it's in the denominator, you divide it. Divide it by 2. And the answer when you hit enter is 167 moles of O2. Okay, in essence, what are you doing? Okay, it's a 2 to 1 ratio. You are going to have it. 334 divided by 2 gives you 167. And you are halving your amount. Okay, it's like following a recipe. Those with my notes, again, will see your given written out as 334 moles. We're looking for moles of oxygen. There's my 2 to 1 mole ratio. Reaction ratios are always in moles. Important to know. Whatever you're given with is where you start with your solving, and then you make sure that your units cancel out. Moles of H2, put moles of H2 on the bottom, one mole of O2, put it in the calculator, bada bing, bada boom, 167 moles of O2. And that is how you solve mole-mole problems in stoichiometry. Thanks for watching.